Refrigerators are one of the hardest items to recycle. And they're filled with polluting gases that can leak out in the process. These can warm the earth thousands of times more than carbon dioxide. But Angel Toledo is fighting to keep that from happening. Scientists say controlling fridge gases is one of the best ways to fight the climate crisis. So why aren't more people doing it? We visited Angel's business in Guatemala to find out. Estoy viviendo con el enemigo. En mi casa tengo una refrigeradora. It took Angel about a year after founding his recycling company to figure out what to do with refrigerator gas. Y no tenía yo ni la más mínima idea de qué hacer con el gas, pero lo que sí sabía era que no lo podía eh, liberar. Tuve que aprender, digamos, eh, buscando, investigando, leyendo. During that time, over 4,000 fridges piled up at Ecología Total. Now, Ángel and his team handle about 400 industrial refrigerators a month. Many of them come from a partnership with Pepsi. First, they check whether a fridge still contains gases. Hacemos la conexión para saber si hay presión en el sistema. Si no hay presión, que no lo miden estos manómetros, entonces significa que no tenemos refrigerante. The gas leaked out of about a third of these fridges during use. If there is gas, they attach tubes and collect it. Entonces esta es la, la forma más segura para que no se escape eh, el refrigerante. Perforamos la tubería, abrimos el manómetro para establecer la, la presión, si tiene o no refrigerante, y entonces ya empezamos con la extracción. Each fridge contains about a half a pound of gas. It may not sound like a lot, but... 8 o 10 onzas del gas es letal para el medio ambiente. Es, 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 es grosero, realmente es impactante. Ángel makes no money from collecting the gases. That's where recycling the other parts comes into play. Nosotros desmantelamos completamente cada unidad y extraemos pieza por pieza. Then they fold up the metal sheets and a machine crushes them into blocks. These recovered metals help pay the bills. Sacamos, por ejemplo, hierro, sacamos aluminio, sacamos cobre, ¿verdad? Y también tratamos de ser responsables con otros elementos que no tienen valor, como por ejemplo la, la espuma. This rigid foam is particularly hard to recycle because it can't be melted and reshaped like other types of plastic. Nos costó encontrarle una forma de poder este, disponer que no tenga un impacto muy alto en el medio ambiente. Ángel is still trying to figure out how to reuse it. Entonces, dentro de las alternativas que hemos encontrado es poder procesarlo, molerlo, ¿sí? Y convertirlo en pedacitos como esto. Esto ya puede utilizarse también como, como, un, como un aislante. Grinding up this type of foam can also release gases, but they could leak anyway if the foam sat in the landfill. Ángel says the crumbled foam could be used to insulate roofs or made into coolers. But right now, the company doesn't make money off of it either. Seguimos haciendo unas pruebas de poder utilizarlo de de otras formas. Workers also strip wires to sell the metals inside. Only about 5% of the fridges recycled here contain first-generation gases, the oldest and most harmful ones. These are known as chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs. The same kind of stuff you used to find in hairspray. They're terrible for the ozone layer in the upper atmosphere. Ozone is important because it shields the surface of the Earth from the sun's ultraviolet rays. If it disappeared, life on Earth wouldn't last long. In 1985, scientists discovered a giant hole in the ozone over Antarctica, caused by CFCs from fridges and other products. Two years later, the UN introduced an agreement to phase out the ozone-depleting gases. It became the only UN treaty ratified by every country. Manufacturers eventually settled on using HFCs, or hydrofluorocarbons. And the switch actually worked. In 2016, scientists found that the hole had shrunk by an area twice the size of Mexico in 15 years. 
Angel uses this machine to figure out whether each refrigerator's gas affects the ozone. He got the device from an American company called Tradewater, which finds and destroys fridge gases around the world. After analysis, ozone-thinning gases go into 4,000-pound storage tanks. Tradewater also helps Angel figure out where to send these gases for destruction. We form this uh, collaboration where we look for refrigerant together, and then we, when we reach a critical mass in the country, we export those to get destroyed at a proper destruction facility. Right now, Ecologio Total is building up enough gases to make shipping them out for destruction economically feasible. To destroy the gases, a special type of waste facility heats them until the molecules come apart. The machine cools back down, and eventually more than 99% of the gas becomes water or steam. If the fridge has a gas that doesn't affect the ozone, Angel might reuse it in another refrigerator. In the case of this gas, which is the 134A, there is a possibility to regenerate and return to use. But even though these are easier on the ozone layer, they still contribute to climate change. And some nations started phasing them out in 2016. One common HFC has more than 1,000 times the warming power of carbon dioxide. So recycling these gases into new refrigerators is controversial among experts. We know that the odds of it being properly recovered again at the end of that second life, let's say, that you're giving it, are relatively low. So we'd rather get that destroyed than get it recycled. But everyone agrees that the ozone-thinning gases should be destroyed. Even though most manufacturers stopped using CFCs by 2009, they're still leaking out of old equipment around the world. If no one stops those leaks, they'll add the equivalent of 10 billion metric tons of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. That's almost twice what the whole U.S. emitted in 2018. Getting the gases to these destruction facilities is a challenge too. These materials are considered hazardous waste by most countries around the world. So moving them across borders means navigating a web of legal restrictions. Tradewater helps Angel do that by selling something called a carbon offset credit. Anyone who wants to lower their carbon footprint can buy a credit from Tradewater, and the money will help the company fight greenhouse gases. And that's how we are able to cover the costs of the whole operation and, and recover that investment. Angel's business also gets a cut of this money. So it's this positive cycle of the more we find, the more we can finance to go and find and collect and avoid some more greenhouse gases. Mm -hmm. A company might find it cheaper or easier to buy an offset from Tradewater than to reduce its own emissions. When companies advertise net zero emissions, that often means they bought enough offset credits to compensate for their own emissions. But even this system is controversial because it can allow companies to claim a smaller carbon footprint while carrying on business as usual. You should always avoid and reduce emissions first. It's always better to not spill the milk on the table than to try to clean it up afterwards. And it's common for companies to overestimate the environmental benefits of the credits. It's a bit of a wild west when it comes to the voluntary carbon market. We've seen that the vast majority of projects fail to meet our basic sustainability requirements related to climate integrity, biodiversity, protection and, and social impacts. Ultimately, carbon offsets are useful if they pay for projects that wouldn't happen otherwise. And Maria Jose says Tradewater follows strict protocols to make sure its offsets really work. It involves a lot of little details to make sure we're doing things right. Calibration of scales, visibility of the refrigerant with making sure we fulfill the technical environmental assessment panel requirements from the Montreal Protocol. So Angel says these requirements might be one reason so few companies are working to safely dispose of fridge gases. One of the questions a bit difficult is to be able to all the norms that we ask. It's not easy. So, anyone is scared and says, no, but I think that's also a bit of the challenges. And knowing his work helps the environment, keeps him going. Digamos, digo yo, es como, como el éxtasis, digamos, eh, de este trabajo. Ya hay evidencias científicas que efectivamente la capa de ozono se ha ido recuperando. El beneficio entonces va a ser trasladado a las personas que habitamos este, este clima.